In this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to create and export Instagram stories from inside of Premiere Pro. Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX. Now in the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how to actually create an Instagram story. But if you're only interested in the export settings, then you can skip ahead to that part in the video. Now, if you're looking to up your Instagram game, I've already put together a bunch of Instagram story packs. Now all of those already come pre-made in the optimal settings. And all you have to do is just add your text and media. Then you can just export them and upload them straight onto Instagram. Instagram stories. Now they come ready made for After Effects and Premiere and I've linked to all those packs in the description below. Now I've also linked in the description below to the two files that you're going to need for this tutorial. So download and install those first. So over in Premiere Pro, I've already imported my first image here and I want to right click and create a new sequence. Now I find the best way is to actually go across to the settings tab. Now this is personal preference, but I actually like to use the RE Cinema setting. So I just select that. I'm going to set this to be 30 frames a second. Now for the frame size, this is the important part. We want a vertical based video. So I want to make sure that my first horizontal axis is only 1080 pixels. And I want to make sure my vertical axis is 1920 high. So it's basically high definition, but we flipped it on a vertical axis. Now, the other thing is you need to make sure that square pixels is selected and I can come down here and just give this a name. I'm just gonna call mine Instagram and hit okay. All right, so now we have that composition. We're ready to bring our images straight in. So what I can do is grab my image here and just drag it straight into that composition. Now I'm going to zoom in here a bit on the timeline so we can see what we're doing. Now the first thing you'll notice here on the right is that we've got a vertical based video that's already set to the optimal settings for Instagram stories. So when our media is already dragged in, if we come over here to the effects controls, you can simply just scale this up. Now, if you're using 16 by nine video, you'll notice that your video will look something like this. Now, all you have to do is just scale that up until it fills that entire frame. Now you don't have to do that, but I really recommend doing that if you want to really get the most impact out of your Instagram story. So that's what we're gonna do here, we've scaled this up. The other thing I want to do is just come back here and create a scale keyframe. And I want to go across to about sort of three second mark here. So I'm using my timestamp here and I'm just gonna create another keyframe. And I want to scale this up to around sort of 82 here. The other thing I'm going to do is also just create an out point by hitting O on the keyboard and that's just going to create an out point for that composition. And you can see we've just got a really basic zoom transitioning happening there on the background. The other thing I'm going to do is also make sure that my loop animation is on or my loop playback to get that. All you have to do is hit that plus button and then you can select the loop playback and hit okay. And that's just gonna loop that playback continuously over and over and over again. The other thing I'm going to do is also come up here to the color tab and I just want to drop the exposure of my image here maybe to around there. So that's just going to darken it right down so we're really going to get more impact on that text that we're going to overlay over the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back to my editing tab. So the next thing is I want to actually put some text that goes over my image. So all we need to do is come down here to the text tool. I'm simply just going to draw out a box and I'm simply just going to type out my text here and I'm going to come over to the effects controls and we're just going to scale this up and also give it a nicer looking font. So the font that I'm actually using is called Jamie Blues and I've linked to that in the description below if you haven't already downloaded that. And I'm also just going to center it here and scale it right up. And I'm also going to use this little thing here just to just to move them closer together. So something like that. I'm just gonna fix this up. So now we have our text that sits over the top of our image. So now I just wanna add a little box that goes around the outside just to highlight that text that's already there. So we can do this by simply just coming down here to the pen tool. I'm going to hold my left mouse click and actually just go down to the rectangle tool and I can simply just draw a box that goes around my text like that. Now at the moment, by default, it's already gonna go as a solid. And if I come back over to the effects controls, we can just modify that. So I can actually remove the fill and I can hit this stroke button 
and actually scale this up. So I'm going to go up to around 40 here. And the other thing I want to do is actually change that color to something around there, like that nice yellow. And the other thing I want to do is actually just come down to my selection tool. I'm just going to recenter this so it sits more in the middle like this. So the other thing I want to do here is just add a scale animation here. So what I'm going to do is select that graphic and I want to come up to the top motion tab and create a scale keyframe and then come across maybe 10 frames here, create another scale keyframe. And with that first one selected, I'm just gonna scale this back down to zero. And then I wanna select both of those keyframes, just right click and make them both Bezier. I can also speed up this animation slightly so we get something that looks like that. And the other thing I want to do is actually offset my text coming in. So when this one actually finishes, I'm going to select my text and create a scale keyframe here. Go across a little bit, create another scale keyframe. And with that first one selected, scale that back to zero and also make these Bezier as well. So if I play through that now, you can see that we have a basic animation of them coming in. So the other thing we're going to do here is actually create a mask which runs over that box and it's going to separate once that text actually animates in. So to do this, what we actually do is we select that graphic and we simply just come over here and create a free draw Bezier. And what I'm going to do is come back over to my main image and just zoom in. And what I'm going to do is just create a mask which sort of runs across like this. Now you can readjust any of this after you've made it so it doesn't have to be perfect here. I also apologize for the background noise because there's a lot of rain pouring down outside so I'll try and speak a little bit louder. But what we're going to do is once we've created that mask, we're going to come back over here and I'm going to remove the feather because we don't want that. So the other thing I've noticed here is it's got two masks. So I just want to delete this first mask. So we're only looking at this second mask here that we've just created. And I want to invert that mask. And that's going to create the look that we're actually going for, which is that separated line effect. So the other thing we're going to do is also just create a mask expansion for that. So just after my text finishes animating, I'm going to create a mask expansion and I'm going to drag this down to about there just until it reconnects. And then I'm going to go across here on the timeline and move this back to zero. So it animates that separation basically or that mask. And I also want to add a very slight sort of scale bounce as my mask animates out. So what we're going to do is we're going to select both of those keyframes. I'm going to right click, make them both Bezier again, so they animate nice and smooth. I'm going to speed them up by moving them closer together. And right as they animate out, I'm going to create another scale keyframe here. And I want to drag this one up very slightly here. So now if I was to play through that, you can see we have this animation. Now there's something actually going on here, which is a problem that a lot of you probably run into because it's an issue that I've had quite a lot. And you can see right in between these two keyframes, when you animate a Bezier, even though these two keyframes are exactly the same setting, Premiere and also After Effects animates in between that. So one way I can actually get around this is actually right click on them and just make them linear. And that's just going to remove that animation. Then if I right click and just make them easy ease in, that's just going to cut off that animation and stop Premiere from actually animating that little bounce. So that's looking really good there at the moment. We've got everything where we want it and it's animating as we want it. So the last thing here is I just wanna add some little text down the bottom with some swipe up arrows. So we can just repeat this process again. I'm gonna come down here. And I just wanna type out swipe up text here. I'm gonna scale this down. I'm just gonna use Helvetica new here and I'm also just going to center this up and scale it down even more. I'm also just going to push these closer together. I can also zoom in here just to make it easier and see what we're actually doing. I'm just going to select the hand tool here and actually just, and just move down so we can see what we're working on. And I'm just also going to recenter this so it sits nicely there in the middle. And now I just want to create the little arrows that go above that. Well, with that text layer selected, I can come over here to my pen tool and actually just create a little arrow like this 
And if I come back over to my, to my shape layer settings, I can just drop that right down. I'm also going to change the stroke to be white. And the other thing I can do here is if I actually take that and just Command C or Control C on a, on a PC, and just paste it, I've created essentially a duplicate, which I can also just drag up very slightly here. And I'm also going to turn down the opacity on this one so it looks something like this. So then all I need to do is actually just animate this in on the bottom. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to come up to my motion tab and create a position keyframe. I'm just going to move this in so after my box animates, so somewhere around here, and create another position keyframe about there. And then I'm just going to scale this one down so it starts off screen. So it comes in like that. Again, right click on those and make them both bezzy air. Then you can just readjust the timing there as needed. So the other thing I want to do here is also just animate those arrows to kind of bounce up and down. So what we can do is come back down to where we created, so where we actually created those two shape layers. And I want to create a position keyframe here for both of those little arrow layers. And I want them to line up here with my position keyframe on my overall composition. So line them up nicely like that. I'm going to go across to maybe about here and create another two position keyframes. And some, I want to drag my playhead to somewhere in the middle there and create another two and then just position both of these up. And what that's going to do is just create a little bounce animation that you can see on the thing. Now to repeat that animation, all you have to do is just copy those keyframes and paste them again. So I'm just going to copy them, go across on my timeline here to somewhere about there. Copy these ones and paste them. And you can see if we also right click and make them all Bezier as well, that's just going to help smooth out that entire animation. So now when we play through this, you can see that we have our finished Instagram story. Okay, so that's the first part of this tutorial on actually how to make this. So in the second part, I'm gonna show you how to actually best export this out of Premiere. Now here's the great part, we don't actually have to leave Premiere, we can do this all within Premiere. So just come up to File, down to Export, and then across to Media. And what I actually find is that you want to come across here and make sure that this is set to H.264. You can then select where you want to save it. And then I'm going to come down here to the settings and it's really important that we match the source settings. So that's going to match that vertical video. And you can also see here on the left just to make sure that it is correct. The other thing I want to do is also render at maximum depth and also use the maximum render quality. And then you can simply just export. Now I've navigated to my save file, I can play through that and make sure that everything looks good. Now from this point, that file is ready to go straight to Instagram. So all you need to do is basically grab your phone and if you're using an iPhone, I like to use AirDrop and actually just AirDrop my file straight onto my phone and then I can upload that straight as an Instagram story. Now if you're using a PC and an Android device, you can look up online the best way to actually do that. So there you go guys, that's how you create Instagram stories inside of Premiere Pro. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.